Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we're gonna revisit the CJ Wurleman show today with his just uploaded video, Unstoppable Rise of Islam in Unexpected Places. So I really enjoyed his coverage on the Football World Cup and how Islam was the actual winner. Therefore, I'm really curious to see what CJ Wurleman means with the unstoppable rise of Islam in unexpected places. With no further ado, let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wurleman. Don't forget Hello, to hit CJ. the subscribe button below and we kindly ask you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Now let's get into it. Islam is not only the world's fastest growing religion, having grown from 1.6 billion followers in 2013 to 2 billion today, but it will also be the world's largest religion by 2050, the year the total Muslim population will exceed 3 billion people. And there's absolutely nothing. It's very interesting. I'm trying to imagine the world and how the narrative will shift once Islam becomes the dominant religion worldwide. Because then you cannot say that Islam is a minority. In fact, if it is the world's leading religion, I believe that this could shatter the Western dominance. These guys can do about it. Not him, nor him, and certainly not her. Because Islam is proving to be an unstoppable force. And not because it's being spread forcibly, but because the Prophet Muhammad made it easy to understand. But he is absolutely correct, man. The simplicity of the message is what is appreciated by the people. It is not a complex, complicated doctrine. Of course, you can go into the complexity of the religion. And if you want to become a scholar, you would be amazed. However, the core message is simple. I personally believe as well that the truth is always simple. There is no son of God that has been sent down for us to die for our sins. There are no countless of manifestations of different goddesses and gods coming from Brahmin. You do not have to be initiated through psychotropic plants in the Amazon jungle. No, quite the opposite. The message is very clear. Worship God alone. Stoppable force. And not because it's being spread forcibly, but because the Prophet Muhammad made it easy to understand. But what many people tell me is that they find Islam much more simpler than Christianity. Sure. So for example, they'd say, look, uh, in Christianity, you guys have to believe in a trinity. You know, there's one God who exists as three persons, but there are yeah. three gods, or there are one God, but different persons, and, and that's kind of complicated. In Islam, we have it simple. There is just one God who exists as one person. Obviously, Islam sure. will continue to grow at a steady and predictable rate in Muslim-majority countries. But what I find God really knows. fascinating is how the religion is growing in countries where Muslims represent a tiny minority of the population. I'm yeah, talking about of course, man, because Muslims actually reproduce and we Westerners or even here in Japan, you see that in Japan's <laughs> rates are through the roof. People are so depressed. They believe in nothing. They believe in work. They do not believe in the family structure anymore. And therefore, you will see that the Muslim population will outgrow the atheist population because the atheist population is so smart that they're going to get rid of themselves ultimately. If you look into the doctrines that have popped up in the past 10 years alone, it's absolutely sickening. You look into the ABC club and what they do to children. Moreover, you look into simple education and how everybody prides themselves to be an intellectual and first I have to study and then I'm gonna have kids. And ultimately they end up with maybe one kid at best. I lived in Germany for the longest time and the far right is complaining about the migrants and look at them how many children they produce. It is the great replacement etc etc. Yeah well produce more children then nobody is stopping you. Muslims are producing the most children and just by that metric alone, they will conquer the world. Simple. Japan, South Korea, Mexico, and many others. Of course. Because what makes these countries captivating case studies is the way in which their respective Muslim populations are growing organically and not by immigration. 
It's important to tell these stories because we counter Islamophobia by promoting a deeper understanding of Islam. Because yes, while it remains the world's fastest growing religion, it also remains the least understood. 100%. But we start with South Korea, where the Muslim population has grown to 200,000, which is a remarkable wow. achievement given Islam was banned in the country until as recently as 1910, when Korea pursued an isolationist policy. It wasn't until the 1950s when Islam was introduced to the Korean people by members of the Turkish military, who came to fight alongside South Korean soldiers during the Korean War. They asked to help us again in Korea, because to help you, of course, I am 88, but that's what we like to do. I mean, how can anybody not love that guy? Well, <laughs> South Koreans love him too, as they do all Turkish people, which is why the two countries have forged an incredibly close bond over the past 70 years. Wow. This relationship has this. allowed Islam to flourish. Watch this Korean woman explain how she became a Muslim. Her story is typical of the Korean Muslim experience. But I since converting to Islam in 2007, Bora Song has become somewhat of an Instagram star with more than 180,000 followers. And she uses her social media influence to help Koreans better understand Islam. That's amazing. When Koreans aren't learning Islam from Muslims like Bora Song, they are converting to the religion after working or traveling through the Middle East or nearby Muslim majority countries, Indonesia and Malaysia. There yeah. are many paths to the top of the mountain. So Indonesia and Malaysia is, of course, very relatable. Those are Asian countries. And this was so surprising to me. I was ignorant and arrogant at the same time. Very little to no knowledge whatsoever. But I thought I know it all. I thought I know Islam. I know exactly what it's about without ever opening up the Quran or visiting a mosque. So when I traveled to Southeast Asia, to Malaysia, to Indonesia, and then I saw those Asian Muslims, I was mind blown. At that point, I didn't even know that those Asian countries are in fact the majority Muslim population to this very day. I thought it's some Arabs or Turks or whatnot. No, Asians are the number one Muslim population today. Big. Korean citizens, they are very, how can I say, interested to what they understand about Islam. In case oh, of Seoul Central Masjid, in, we can say maybe every year, the number of uh, embraced Muslim, new Muslim, I mean, more than 100 persons. Sadly, many Koreans continue to have big misunderstandings about Islam, mostly because local media began linking the religion to terrorism in 2007. Always. The year 23 Korean missionaries were kidnapped by the Taliban, two of whom were killed before the South Korean government reached a deal for their release. The saga dominated media headlines for weeks, creating a negative impression about Islam that persists today. <laughs> Earlier this year, Muslim students face local backlash after building a mosque on campus grounds. I'm here as a representative of the KNU Muslim Students Community, and the community is comprised of more or less 150 Muslim students. This place is not some new place for us because we have been praying here uh, from past seven years. And now, like after feeling the need for it because the Muslim students are larger in number, so they were not able to pray properly in the previous place. So we uh, started the construction of this place. You can see why anti-Islamophobia activists, including us, must do more to dispel misunderstandings about Islam in Korea. We now turn to South Korea's neighbor to the west, the island nation of Japan, where Islam has experienced this is exponential great growth research, during the past CJ. 20 years. I have to say, man. Amazing in video. fact, the total Muslim population in the Asian country has doubled in the past decade, from 110,000 in 2010 to 230,000 in 2019, wow. with native Japanese converts accounting for roughly 25% of the Muslim population. This growth is matched by the number of mosques being built across the Japanese archipelago. 
Wow. According to multiple scatter reports throughout the last two decades, back in 1970, there were only two mosques in Japan. In 2001, the number increased to 24. In 2017, the number was 90. And currently, there are 115 mosques in the country. A direct evidence of exponentially greater growth of Islam in Japan. For sure. What really makes Japan stand out as a host to a minority Muslim population is the near total absence of Islamophobia. Remarkably, Muslims are welcome to practice their faith in accordance with Islamic principles, even in public. What most Muslims should know about life in Japan and living in Japan as a Muslim is that it's extremely uh, comfortable to live as a Muslim, even more so than uh, many Muslim countries. The reason I say that is because I don't see any restrictions uh, on practicing my religion. Living in Japan as a Muslim, we have mosques, uh, we have halal food, mm. and there is a large Muslim community, actually, we can hang out with, we can talk to. So I think we feel quite comfortable living in Japan. As a this is something that reminds me of an Islamic village that I just visited here in Thailand. I'm going to make a separate video on that, guys, so I don't want to spoil it. However, what is so interesting to me is that Muslims keep their tradition. They keep the dress code. They keep everything, their food, etc., etc. In the midst of the Thailand tourist and party scene, those people established their own Islamic town. And you can see the same thing here in Japan. At first glance, you would never believe that this here is in Japan. This is such a great testament to that Islam never changes. Living in Japan is a Muslim. Our final stop on this short tour around the world is Mexico, where the Muslim population oh, has grown from 50,000 in the early 1990s to 120,000 today, which is astonishing okay. in such a devoutly conservative Christian country. Curious. It is astonishing on the one hand, but on the other hand, Christianity has been brought to Mexico. It has been brought to South America. So before that, they weren't Christians. They were something that the Europeans would classify as pagans. They had their own medicinal healers, etc., etc. So therefore, in our time frame, this seems extremely surprising. But on the other hand, in the long scheme of things, this is a natural development. Even you, CJ, you're from Australia. You know for sure that Australia was very very different before it got colonized and became a somewhat Christian country. So if we take our distance and look at it objectively it's not surprising after all. The village of San Cristobal in the state of Chiapas has been home to a Muslim majority since a Spanish Muslim missionary visited there in 1994. I remember Y eso fue lo que llamó, me llamó la atención. Invité a mi papá, a mi mamá, a mis tíos, primos, abuelos, eh, gente que conozco de infancia, los llevé. Y afortunadamente, pues todos se hicieron musulmanes y ahí es donde empezó a crecer la comunidad. Today, wow. Islam has not only become the fastest growing religion in Mexico, but also the fastest growing among Latin American migrants in the United States. A lot of their values tend to be conservative values. They have a high respect for Jesus, who you know we say is, is a prophet in Islam. They have a high respect for the mother of Jesus, for Mary. So there's that kind of connection with the religion and the idea of God and also love for God. Notably, Islam offers Latin Americans a cultural familiarity that stretches back to the Moors in Spain. Latinos soon reconnect with a hidden past. Mm. They say oh, Islam is not really that foreign to us. Islam is us, is part of us. 4,000 words from Spanish come Arabic. from Arabic. Camisa, mm. pantalón, tomate, salada. Muslims in Mexico yeah. still face discrimination, however, because of the way in which North American media has linked Islam with terrorism. Of course. But to overcome these misconceptions, Latino Muslim organizations have launched a number of initiatives aim to promoting a better understanding of Islam among the majority Christian population, with groups such as Islam in Spanish, coordinating mosque tours and the like, all of which is helping to break down barriers and counter Islamophobia. As you can see, Islam continues to grow rapidly and in unexpected places. 
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. CJ knocked it out of the ballpark yet again. Fantastically researched video, absolutely beautifully put together. Extensive material gathered here to show the different cultures that embraced Islam and how the population is growing. After watching this video as a non-Muslim, I'm really not wondering if, but when CJ will finally revert. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support my channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, much love and peace.